Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming today for this very exciting announcement. And I want to thank Mayor O'Leary for hosting us in the beautiful Brass City. And I want to thank um, our partner, Mayor Hess. Uh, they've been incredible leaders for our municipalities, and they are people of vision, and you're going to hear a little more about their vision in just a moment. So we're here today for a major announcement that Blue Water Property Group has been selected to develop a, a plan for the Waterbury Naugatuck Industrial Park to transform it into a state-of-the-art distribution facility. This project is going to spur economic growth and create over a thousand new jobs throughout this entire area. That deserves a round of applause, don't you think? <laughs> so this is located in a fantastic area just at the crossroads of routes 84 and 8 that's going to give um, this company access to Connecticut and beyond and it's going to provide access to Connecticut's great workforce. There's still a lot of work to be done to see this project through to fruition and the public is going to have the opportunity to weigh in. Uh, but the governor and I are here today because we've made facilitating economic development and growth and job creation our very top priority. We've been working with our municipal leaders and our legislative partners to this end. And um, we are very excited that with our improved financial position as a state, coupled with the investments we've been making in our workforce, Connecticut is a really attractive place to do business and companies are coming from all over our country and the world to locate here. This project is going to be a major asset, not just for this area, but for our entire state. Now you will notice that I did not mention the name of the company that is coming because I wanted one of our visionary municipal leaders to be able to do that. So it's my pleasure to introduce our dear friend, Mayor O'Leary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this is quite a place to have a party. <laughs> the governor and I were talking about this the last time he was here was when we signed the PTSD legislation into law uh, right here in this firehouse and I was reminiscing because uh, I actually grew up in this firehouse. My father uh, was a Waterbury firefighter, career Waterbury firefighter stationed here and uh, my five brothers and sisters and I used to come here all the time and climb up and down these poles. We had a lot of fun in here. Governor Lamont, we're so happy to see you here today. It's exciting news. Lieutenant Governor Beisowitz, our wonderful Congresswoman, Johanna Hayes, and all of our elected officials here. Uh, particularly uh, proud to have our DECD Commissioner uh, Lehman here with us, and Peter Denios from Advanced CT, uh, Jim Griffin, uh, Jim Smith, Jim Griffin, Jim Smith from uh, uh, former CEO and President of Webster Bank. And uh, uh, of course, our uh, president and CEO of Naugatuck uh, Valley Regional uh, Corporation, Tom Hyde, is here. This is an exciting day for Waterbury um, for so many different reasons, but there's this 163 acre parcel of land that sits both in Waterbury and Naugatuck on the south side of our town. Uh, when Pete Hess uh, was elected uh, mayor in the borough back in 2000. Uh, 15 and 16, uh, we had conversations about what to do with this property. At the same time, we were having conversations with Jim Smith, 
uh, helping uh, get his advice and expertise on how to develop a regional uh, development authority similar to the uh, Capital Region Development Authority up in Hartford. We wanted to take that approach to economic development. You know, in, uh, in the Valley uh, that we're all so proud of, uh, we thought maybe if we started working together that we would have better success in securing uh, funding and support uh, from our governor, our legislators. And uh, this is one beautiful example of how that can work and when everyone works collaboratively instead of in separate silos. So we're really proud of today for a lot of reasons, uh, but particularly because Amazon has chosen this location. <laughs> as their preferred site and uh, with, of course, Blue Water Construction Company as their developer. Uh, I'm working closely with Mayor Hess and support from the state, which has been incredible, uh, particularly those that I've mentioned. We've made so, so, such significant progress over the years. The city's actually owned this property for 35 years and been trying to figure out what to do with it. And uh, when, as I mentioned, when uh, Pete Hess first got elected, we got together on this property and we looked at the properties that adjoined this property and we found this 10 acre parcel of land owned by Mike Devino at the time. And uh, Pete and I approached Mike and uh, we told him we want to buy it. We need the property. We need this property so we can get access into our property. And he was great. He, he negotiated a very fair price. The borough and the city purchased, jointly purchased the property which opened up the gateway into the property from a different approach inside the Waterbury, excuse me, the Naugatuck Industrial Park. Having gone that far with it, we then uh, got a $2.8 million bond authorization from the uh, state of Connecticut in 2017 so that we were able to run utilities into the property as well through that newly acquired 10-acre parcel. And uh, so that made the property even more attractive and viable. In April of 2021, we went out to bid and received proposals from two developers. Blue Water Property Group was obviously chosen. The Naugatuck Valley Regional Development Corporation is leading the project on behalf of both municipalities. Mayor Hess and I started uh, the NVR uh, D, the Naugatuck Valley Regional Development Corporation, uh, a couple of years ago with the idea, as I mentioned, of taking this regional approach, and this is just the perfect example of what can happen when everyone works together. Once complete, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, there'll be 1,000 full-time jobs with excellent benefit package and several hundred part-time jobs, which is really appealing. Yeah. I'm excited for the part-time jobs our high school uh, students and others will have an opportunity uh, many of which may uh, start there part-time and go right into full-time. And, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, a thousand full-time jobs, several hundred part-time jobs, having Amazon first mile fulfillment center right here in the city of Waterbury, and we're very close to having the new last mile Amazon facility, which will open up on East Main Street over by uh, Coles, and that's, that project is uh, probably weeks away from shovels in the ground. So we're really, really excited what this means for this region. Make no mistake about it, uh, Commissioner Lehman, uh, the governor, have been in the loop on this from the very, very beginning. This is not anything that just happened overnight. Uh, since the governor took office and. Uh, the Commissioner uh, Lehman has been here several times looking at different pieces. We've always uh, brought them down to this parcel to show them what we felt was an enormous potential for this piece. And, and today, is really, it's really, I'm proud to be the mayor of the city of Waterbury and have our uh, Mayor Hess with us here today. Uh, Pete and I work really well together. Uh, we have a lot of fun together and trying to identify economic development projects. and. Uh, He's got some really uh, out-of-the-box uh, approaches to thinking with this type of thing, and it's always, uh, it's always really inviting. We're also uh, big members of our NV COG, of course, uh, as a chair. Um, you know, the NV COG, our goal is to do economic development projects for all of our members of the COG, all the way down through the valley. So exciting news, and so grateful to be here, so grateful to have all of you here.
And uh, we've got some a great speaking program, so I'll stop talking and start listening. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, thank you so much. And I'm going to bring up uh, a person who has been doing a lot on the economic development front, who spends all of his time trying to think about how he can revitalize the Naugatuck Valley and our good friend, Mayor Pete Hess. Thank you, Susan. It's great to be here today with uh, our great partner, the city of Waterbury, um, and our other partners and all the dignitaries. You know, um, Mayor O'Leary mentioned how, how we work together. and. And we do work together very, very well. But in the end, it's all about teamwork. And, and, and who is our team? So in Naugatuck, um, we have my office. We have the Board of Mayor and Burgesses who work with us. And they're not here today, but they work with us all the time. We have uh, NEDC, which is the Naugatuck Economic Development Commission, and Ron Puglis, who's with us. They're a big part of the Naugatuck team. And we work with the Waterbury team, with, with Mayor O'Leary's team, and, and, and all of his staff, and all the senators. And of course, the state of Connecticut, I can't say enough. Governor, thank you for all you do. Commissioner Lehman, DECD, one of our partners. You know, when, when Mayor O'Leary and I um, together went up to DECD to make the presentation for this site before we knew who the tenant was. And you got the lucky straw to announce that, Neil. But, um, but you know, this is, it's fantastic. But DECD was so thankful that we were there together, working together as a team. And the regional approach is, is the key. And, you know, another member of our team is now NBRDC, Naugatuck Valley Regional Development, that we formed together, and Jonathan Albert, our, our chairman, is here today. So, you know, in the end, I can't stress enough, it's all about teamwork, working together, and the regional approach. And, you know, in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. That's what they say. Well, we have the best location. Um, we have centrality. Just think about where this property is in relationship to all the major towns in Connecticut. You know, if you had to stick a pin in the middle, um, you'd stick it right on our site. We have centrality, a great site, now we have a great project, and we have our newest partner, Blue Water. And I'm thrilled to add Blue Water to our team. You know, we did quite a bit of due diligence they're an awesome partner, and uh, we welcome them to our, to our team, and we look forward to working with them. So um, I just have one more thing to say. Let's get to work and get this going. Mayor Hess, thank you so much. Uh, we're honored to have our legislative colleagues here. You're going to hear from some of them, but I do want to recognize Representative Geraldo Reyes, Representative Ron Napoli, and I saw Rep. DG uh, multitasking as he does. Um, and it is my pleasure to introduce the person who leads uh, the Commerce Committee um, in our state Senate. Uh, Senator Joan Hartley. Thank you, Madam Lieutenant Governor, and good morning to everyone, um, Governor, my mayors, and of course my congresswoman, and all of my colleagues. You know, the sun has not quite broken out there yet today, but it sure is shining in here. Yes. Um, and so this is a great day for the Naugatuck Valley, and we couldn't be prouder, but it did not happen without the incredible work and partnership of this regional community. Um, and going back to the early days when we first started, recognizing the fact that the strength of Connecticut is not singular, 
in individual cities. It is collective. And we, we learned our lessons, quite frankly, from some other um, responses to RFPs, where we, knew, we recognized that if we went in collectively as a region, we would distinguish ourselves. And that's what we have done here today. Lessons learned, um, and we will prove them all right, that here in the Naugatuck Valley, regionalism works, that we have a very strong team, that this is, this is the valley. And we have every tool uh, lined up right now, teed up, and it's going to be very exciting. I do want to mention the fact that um, with the new leadership um, of the regional directors, um, Tommy Hyde and Ron Puglise, um, they are working very collaboratively. We have passed legislation through the Commerce Committee, um, and um, the governor has recognized immediately, the lieutenant governor signed it, supported it, which uh, helps regional entities. And this will be a showcase example. So um, congratulations to everyone who has made it possible. Long ago, Jim Smith was talking about regionalism um, and never let go of that conversation. And so today, uh, we are reaping the benefits of that. Congratulations to everyone. We're very excited to go Thank forward. You, Thank you. Senator Hartley, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to introduce another person who is a fierce advocate for our workers and for workforce development and job creation and how they're intertwined. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Senator George Cabrera. Good morning. Good morning. This is an exciting day. Thank you all for being here, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, um, Commissioner, my colleagues and friends in the Senate and the House. Thank you so much. And of course, mayors and my good friend, Congresswoman, and Mayor Hess, of course, uh, a fighter. Uh, I represent a sheer Naugatuck with Senator Hartley. And uh, there is nothing more dignified than providing a good paying job for someone to support their family and to raise their children. And that's what I see here. Um, the economic development is a fantastic development here. This is going to have an impact throughout the region. You know, I also represent Ansonia and Derby, uh, Bethany, Beacon Falls, all the way down to Woodbridge and Hamden. And this is going to have an impact on so many good, hardworking families. So I am really excited about this development. I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you to do whatever I can to make sure that we continue the progress on this project and many other projects. Please know you have a friend in the State Senate to work with you. So it's an exciting day. And I'm looking forward to getting to work. Thank you. So this project um, is going to need infrastructure investment. Some has already been done in terms of getting utilities to the site. Uh, but our roads are going to see some more wear and tear. And we are going to need federal funding. and. There is no more incredible advocate for uh, Waterbury and Naugatuck than our incredible Congresswoman Johanna Hayes. I like to call her our fairy godmother of federal funding. Congresswoman Hayes. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and to everybody here. Um, this is really an exciting day. I was, as I was listening to the mayor speak, I've heard this story many times. It's been about seven or eight years, I was saying to him, that he's been talking about really bringing something like this to Waterbury. And for anyone who has grown up in Waterbury, know this community, I'm from the city. And I can remember as a little girl, you know, you heard the older people talking about how you could leave a job at one factory and have another job by lunchtime the same day because jobs were that readily available in the city of Waterbury. So to see these properties being abandoned over the years was so incredibly disheartening and painful. So I am so incredibly excited to be a part of, of this project, to see Amazon coming here, to see this land develop, and to see jobs coming. You know, for people in the city of Waterbury, these types of just blue-collar jobs open the door to the middle class. It is the path home ownership. When we're talking about young people and high school students having their first job as a part-timer and then going into a full-time job, on the Committee of Education and Labor, we are always looking for ways to expand access to opportunities because I recognize that college is not the pathway for everyone. 
So allowing people to have really good paying jobs where they can provide for themselves and their family is just the shot in the arm that this community needs. But we're, on, we're at the point where we're realizing you know, the fruits of our labor. This has been a long journey. And one of the things that I have been incredibly committed to is providing federal funds to clean up these sites so that we are attractive in the, in the valley for developers to come in. In the last two years during my time in Congress, we have bought $1.9 million in EPA grants to clean up these toxic sites, to address brownfields, to remediate these lands, because we have the geography, we have the location, we have the centrality, but we have to make it um, attractive for developers to see what, to, to begin to imagine what is possible in this area, to begin to see what many of us saw growing up, to see these thriving workforces and people not only working in this area, but living in this area, shopping in this area, raising their families in this area. So uh, I'm very excited for, for what happens next. Um, I'm very excited that I, I'm around to hear the end of this story because I've heard the beginning of it so many times. And I've heard the mayor talk about his plans for what he imagines for all of these lands to, to look like. And just, I, I want to tell you, Mayor, and I'm sure you've heard it, you've done a tremendous job with really revitalizing many of these forgotten lands all over the city. You know, if you drive through the outskirts of the city, not just um, in the South End, but every part of the city, um, the, our mayor is reimagining what they can be and really selling that to developers across the country to bring their business here and, and grow and develop uh, this community. So thank you, Mayor Larry, Mayor Hess, for partnering with this guy. I, I can imagine you can't sleep when, <laughs> when he, because he's on the phone, when he has an idea, it hits him like a bolt of lightning. And, <laughs> and he's on the phone really trying to see it all the way through. So, you know, thank you for your tireless efforts in this area and look forward to continuing this work. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, for the past three years, uh, our administration has prioritized fiscal responsibility, workforce development, economic development, and it's just such an exciting day because today we see some of the fruits of our labor, and it is uh, my great pleasure to introduce Governor Ned Lamont. Well, thanks, Susan. Um, Hello, everybody. Just to pull the lens back for a second, um, economies go through periods of fast acceleration every blue moon. You know, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, a few things come to mind. More recently, over the last uh, 50 years or so, it was um, computer science and IT and all the uh, companies that came out of that. And uh, Connecticut didn't always take advantage of these transitions of late and we're left behind. I think our economy is going through another one of these transitions right now, and Connecticut is not being left behind. I think if you look around the state of Connecticut, you see the incredible investments we're making in uh, FinTech and financial services and keeping us ahead of the curve. What you see in terms of the life sciences, um, you know, especially in the middle part of the state. Um, you know, Pete, Neil, what we see in terms of advanced manufacturing, make sure we are the next generation of manufacturing. We have the workforce we need to make sure we can compete with anybody around the world. And there's one other revolution that's going on where Connecticut is going to be a leader, and that's logistics. Mm -hmm. I think we've learned uh, over the last couple of years, you hear a lot about supply chain and not being able to get the products, and uh, Connecticut is at the center of that logistics chain. And that's uh, what this is all about. You know, logistics starts with um, our transportation system, what you see going on with our ports, what you see going on with our um, uh, airports, uh, what you see going on with rail, two-way rail service here in the valley, what that means. And um, I got to tell you, uh, Johanna, this doesn't happen without you. Uh, you know, it was a close call down there in uh, the House of Representatives, and the investments we're making in transportation and logistics are going to be transformative for generations to come. So um, stay down there and keep making this happen for us. Yeah, and um, yeah, you like that. 
And uh, Pete, Neil, I'm glad to see you guys working together. That's a lot better uh, than the alternative. I know all the ideas we've had for this uh, property. Uh, you were just telling me uh, we had, um, you know, a shopping mall. Okay, we're shopping malls are that's good for yesterday. You were talking about a dog track. Okay, that, that's good. But I love where we're going right now. A, a major Amazon distribution facility, one of four major ones in the state of Connecticut interconnecting our roads, interconnecting um, truck and rail, what that means in terms of this part of the state and the state as a whole. We are going to be a logistics center uh, for this entire region. And you see that a big piece of our future. And, um, and also what it means in terms of jobs. You know, these are a thousand good paying jobs. These are jobs that help you get a start in life. These are jobs that say one more reason I want to be living in Naugatuck and Waterbury right here. In addition to great schools and easy transportation in and out, now you have good paying jobs right around the corner. Uh, this is a major anchor tenant, one of the biggest uh, you know, taxpayers you're going to have in your cities. That's how we serve to continue to hold down property taxes in our regions like this. And that's why this is such a big deal. And I want to say to our legislative de delegation, thank you. I mean, Joan, you've been a leader when it comes to especially Brownfields, staying ahead of what we've got to do there. George, what that means in terms of workforce and training and making sure that everybody is ready for the jobs that are out there. Um, this is one economic change in the world where Connecticut's going to be ahead of the curve and be winners for it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Governor, and we're delighted to have our many media partners here. Thank you so much for coming, and we have all of these amazing experts, so we'll open it up to questions. How much is this going to cost? Mayor, you want to get that one? I can help. How much is it going to cost to develop the piece, Paul? Yeah. Well, we're not sure yet because the plans are still uh, being drawn and the architects are designing and uh, all the infrastructure um, as uh, Lieutenant Governor pointed out and the governor the infrastructure into and out of the property working with the Connecticut DOT is all uh, taking place quite frankly as we speak and uh, we're hoping to have a purchase and sale agreement executed uh, within about two weeks and that'll give us a better idea of where we will be with uh, the investment it's massive Several hundred million dollars is, is an accurate um, uh, projection uh, for this piece. And so once the final plans are submitted and we have exactly, you know, we know exactly what it's going to be, we'll be able to uh, determine, and working, of course, with Blue Water and Amazon, what the actual investment will be. Mayor Pete, did you want to add to that? Well, uh, Neil hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, engineering uh, and things like that have to go a lot further before we can have actual numbers. But um, the people we're dealing with are, are sharp, they're on the ball, they have experience, they've done a lot of looking already, and they're confident, and we're confident that it's all gonna fit together and, and move forward. So we don't have exact numbers, but we know we have a great project and we're going full speed ahead. Other questions? I'm sorry, Mike, I couldn't hear you. Yes. Several hundred million dollars. Yes. Not yet. Um, so this, there's a reason why uh, this piece hasn't been developed for so many years. It's, it's got challenges. It's got peaks and valleys and, and a lot of issues. And um, you know, so we're working really closely with Blue Water and Amazon. And uh, they like what they see. Obviously, we're here. Uh, but the due diligence is still going on. Uh, they have an access agreement. They are on site. They will be you know, figuring out what the maximum square footage uh, could be for their facility. Uh, suffice to say, it's significant. So if you're familiar with the uh, North, ha North Haven facility, um, it's something that might look similar to the North Haven facility. It is a fulfillment center. Uh, that is what North Haven is. And so that's what they call, right, the first mile. And that's, uh, you know, that's a, a robotic center down there. And it's going to be very, very um, fun to work this uh, 
with all the latest and greatest technology. So uh, it will be a very significant um, footprint. It does have 163 acres of land to work with. Uh, don't forget, we'll have to have parking for all the employees and egress and access and all the things that are uh, involved. So um, our guest today, we're just so thrilled to announce that Amazon is our partner with Blue Water. And, um, and we have, as I mentioned to you, the last mile facility that's going to start uh, very shortly out in the East End, the first mile facility in the South End. This is very exciting for the city of Waterbury, very exciting for the people in the city of Waterbury and the region for job opportunities, career opportunities, and meaningful, uh, meaningful opportunities for success to raise their, fa their families and, and uh, move into this area. That's a good question, Paul. <laughs> you always ask the good ones. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're not quite sure. Uh, I, I, you know, whenever you talk about construction timetables on a complicated piece of property, you've got to be really careful about it, right? Yeah. So in my world, uh, today would be a good day to start, uh, in Pete's world. But the truth is, uh, once we have the purchase and sale agreement, then we start to do the, uh, the due diligence continues. But then we go into the neighborhoods. We want to go into the neighborhoods. We want to be transparent. We want to make sure that we get input from our uh, neighborhood groups, our stakeholders, um, I am anticipating some sort of uh, time schedule, Paul, you know, m late spring, early summer, probably, hopefully see some, you know, processes in place and get going then. Uh, the overall time frame to build this um, massive facility uh, is estimated to be about two and a half years. It could be north of that as well, uh, depending on, you know, what the final version looks like. Well, you know, we're the ever optimistic mayor, so we don't really talk about the class being half empty. <laughs> There's just no room for it in our life. But um, the truth is uh, they have already done significant due diligence on this piece and have been doing that due diligence for probably north of four months already. They're very familiar with this parcel of land. And I look at uh, we're as confident as we can be at this moment in time that this project is is going to be successful and will be moving forward um, obviously you know we pray a lot around here <laughs> mike Yes and yes. Um, the estimate, you know, we're, we're basing our estimates on the um, on the revenue uh, from the facility in North Haven, uh, which is about five million dollars a year, uh, even in the middle of their tax stabilization program. So that's really significant and a good day for Waterbury and Naugatuck when that happens. Uh, and as the Lieutenant Governor and Governor mentioned, it will help stabilize the property tax rate here. Uh, in the city of Waterbury, and that's what we need to do, folks. Uh, that's not a secret, right? So as far as uh, the second part of your question was, uh, is there a tax stabilization or a tax abatement program being discussed as part of the due diligence we're in right now? Uh, it's fair. Um, uh, what they, you know, it models after what they did in North Haven and other communities, quite frankly, not only in Connecticut, but in the Northeast. Uh, we're not quite there yet, though, to, to talk about the specific details, but um, we're certainly offering as many um, opportunities for Amazon to be successful and to develop this piece as we can, and also keeping in mind the, uh, the revenue that's needed for both our, the borough of Naugatuck and the city of Waterbury. And I should mention that $2.8 million, and I apologize, I didn't, that we were able to get in 2017 had it not been for Senator Hartley and the delegation, um, and which is what made this piece of property so attractive to Amazon, uh, is getting the utilities into the property. That is a significant uh, portion of the, the success of this overall project. The largest that I'm familiar with is, I think, the one that had been uh, by the airport in Windsor. I think so, yeah. I look at, <laughs> I was, uh, I visited a site in Fishkill, New York, Amazon site. Pete and I took a ride down recently, and, uh, and that was quite an amazing uh, experience. We were supposed to go into North Haven, but we're working with a little bit of restrictions from COVID, so 
<laughs> we'll get in there soon, but um, this won't be, this won't be, this won't, will not be larger than Windsor, honestly. It'll mirror mostly North Haven. Others? Well, thank you guys. We're really grateful Thanks for you all being here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.